Assalamu alaikum, good afternoon all, and welcome to the GSO's female recognition series. I'm Naim al Hapsi, and I'm going to take you today through this uh, interview. We have today a very special guest, and before we know about our guest, I will let you first know about why actually we are running these interviews and why we want to highlight on our the great geo scientists did in order to develop this country through this platform and through this this series we want to share the knowledge the hard work the tremendous ideas and also so even the challenge our young professionals that they are coming in the stream and choose the geosciences as their career please Welcome Ustada Hannat Al Hinai, who actually recently retired from PDO and have a broad experience in seismic interpretation, uh, in seismic processing interpretation, and even moved to people support to diversity and inclusion uh, co uh, coordination. So please all welcome Ustada Hannat Al Hinai. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Naima. Thank you, GSO, for inviting me. Um, I am really honored to be here with you all, and I hope um, we can share some good knowledge together, inshallah. Thank you very much, Ustada Hannat, for being with us here and uh, dedicating some time of your actually val very valued time, and we will tell the audience more about it and accepting being here. So, uh, Ustada Hannat, what was geophysics slash geology your major of your choice, or actually you just find yourself in, in, in that major? Okay, um, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Salatu wa Salam ala Ashraf al Musaleen, Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Khatij Ma'in. Um, I think if you ask uh, probably 99% of people on the globe uh, that question, um, majority of them will the answer will be no probably um but um uh, saying no it doesn't mean regret at all uh, my first choice actually after sanawiya was to do medicine um and uh, alhamdulillah i did uh, get uh, uh, offered medicine i was offered medicine as uh, my which was my first choice uh, but uh, I found out that uh, uh, the choice uh, that I was given, um, you know, the study of that particular uh, major wouldn't be in a language that uh, will, when I come back to Amman, will allow me to, you know, to use it, um, especially in medical profession. Uh, so I declined the offer, although it was my first choice, but because the language that, uh, you know, the study language wouldn't be, I didn't think then that it was compatible with the, you know, the common languages that are used in the country. I felt like, you know, I said, sorry, um, can you offer me something different? Um, and funny enough, I didn't have any, you know, we were given three choices to put on the, on the form, uh, which choices you'd like to study. And all of them, I said, medicine, medicine, medicine. So, subhanAllah, I didn't have another option on my list apart from choosing <laughs> from, from the list that the ministry had, Minister of Higher Education had. So, um, the guy there asked me, so what do you want? Um, I said, what do you have? Um, and um, he said, there is here, here's the list. And I looked at the list, and there was geology and there was geophysics. Um, and I remember um, geology, uh, I had some uh, concept taught to a high school. I remembered, um, Allah or Allah I don't know where she is, our money science teacher, Mrs. Khadija, teaching us about fossils in high school. And I remember her when she was mentioning the ages of those fossils and this was our first encounter to hear uh, geological ages um, of millions of years every one of us in the classroom was like what millions of years what are you talking what are you talking about so it was like a surprise with a disbelief we didn't we were not exposed to such concepts earlier so when we were 
uh, exposed to that information during our high school, it, it wasn't something that we could take lightly. In addition to the fossil, uh, she also talked to us about the evolution theory, uh, Darwinism. And when she mentioned that, everybody was just busted in laughing and busted in denial. And, you know, we just did, couldn't accept the theory at all. So when I saw the word geology on the list at the Ministry of Higher Education, uh, I said, what is geophysics? And the guy explained to me saying it's a combination of physics, mathematics, and, you know, chemistry and geology. And I said, oh, physics and mathematics. These were my sub, uh, favorite subjects. I said, that's the one. And that's how I ended up with geophysics, but as, as a BSc. But um, as we all know, uh, studying geophysics, it has a lot of geology in it anyway. So my first major ended up to be geophysics, but my second degree, sorry, my first degree was in, in geophysics. By my second degree was in geology, which is still uh, something that I loved, I, I enjoyed. I did not regret that I didn't do medi medicine, but geophysics instead. And comparable. Dead versus life. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. I really loved it. I enjoyed it uh, in many folds because, first of all, it even under uh, you know it allowed me to understand the the, the universe, the creation itself. So yeah. um, you see it everywhere you go, especially if you are in Oman and you're studying geology or geophysics. I don't think you'd like to go anywhere else to see geology and geophysics. So well, ge geology basically, yeah. but. Uh, yeah, definitely. It's, it's we are blessed. Indeed, we are blessed. We, we are. Alhamdulillah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, Stada Hanna, tell us about your early career. And before you do that, tell us about your university time. Uh, where did you spend your first uh, bachelor degrees and your master degrees? Okay. Um, I did my bachelor degree in Tulsa University in Oklahoma, United States. So, those who are uh, Tulsans and Oklahomas, hooray, hooray. And uh, I did my, um, my uh, master's degree in Oxford Brooks University uh, in petroleum geology. So um, I didn't feel like I was doing something strange, you know, like from studying geophysics uh, to doing a master's degree in petroleum geology. Actually, I thought it was like a continuation of, uh, you know, of, you know, the, the sequence of studying. Yeah, so that's what I did in uh, Masters and BSc and Masters. Yeah, I um, I think I got I got lost uh, in a few minutes, and I'm back. I hope you can hear me, Mr. Hanet. Yes, I can clearly. Yeah, I can see that the internet on yeah. your side. A bit great, well. great. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a bit problematic today. All right, so um, let's let's continue. Let's continue. Uh, thank you for sharing on your on your education. What about your first uh, three to five years of your career in, in, in petroleum development, Oman? How did it went? What did what did you learn? What was your challenges you faced uh, in your uh, at that time with where where it, it's all male dominated? Uh, very few females started on that career in those days. Yeah, um, the first three years definitely when I landed. And in what used to be called the uh, Seismic Processing Center, and I was the first female, the only female in that uh, in that area. Um, my colleague Jalila, um, we studied together. We were together all the. We were the only geophysicists, um, especially female geophysicists. Uh, I think sponsored by PDO, the first female geophysicist and. So we graduated together, but she came uh, to work for because of the family uh, family matters. She came to work after me uh, for by by a few weeks, I believe. So when I uh, joined the company, um, I was the first uh, geophysics graduate to land into seismic processing center, um, and everybody was welcoming. Um, and I think. My colleagues earlier who spoke on this uh, platform did say that 
Alhamdulillah, we are blessed. I must say this. Uh, we are very blessed. Uh, whether we were female or male, but as Omanis, Alhamdulillah, we were blessed and we are blessed because the whole team looked after us. They were teaching, training us. They were, you know, ensuring that we get something meaningful out of the, the job or the project that we were doing. So Alhamdulillah, for the first uh, three years, I was in the processing, uh, seismic processing center, and I did, uh, I remember doing Al-Falah uh, processing uh, line, I, you know, Al-Falah line <clears throat> area. And, uh, but also there were a lot of, which is something that PDO is special uh, about, a lot of training, you know, hands-on training and also local and um, uh, external training in order to make sure that we get what we need in order to produce, you know, the right thing. So that was basically. And then after three years, I went for my master's degree. And when I came back, I moved from the processing center, seismic processing center to the interpretation to the interpretation uh, uh, center, I mean, uh, group. And that's when I started to do uh, seismic interpretation and uh, prospect and well proposals. Yeah. So it's... Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, Mr. any 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 of sort of uh, during that time about 20 plus years of experience uh, is not easy you know uh, it won't went is not like something poop like this it's it's like right to share with us and how, how did you overcome it okay can you repeat the question because there was a bit uh, glitch uh, a bit of a glitch uh, while you were asking your question i'm sorry uh, can you repeat the question, please? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, just stop me when you cannot hear. No worries. Yeah. No worries. So, um, any sort of challenges and blood that all went well, but uh, uh, not necessary okay. challenges during the first years of your career. No, during the whole span of your uh, of your uh, career, it's it's twenty years plus, mashallah, and uh, of course, uh, all this time, definitely there is something that you learned. You learned. Uh, you learn it in a hard way. And uh, how did you overcome these challenges? Yes. Okay. Um, thank you for that question. I think um, the first challenge, I think, um, being um, being alone for the first few weeks, I think, or not by meaning alone, you know, we feel like you you landed in a strange land, especially if you didn't um, do the summer training prior to land on the job. And this is something that maybe I would like to encourage all um, students or graduates that they make sure that before they land on a permanent job, try your best try your best to do at least an internship even if it's a one week internship it's it helps a lot uh when you go to your permanent job to orient you faster to make you you know comfortable faster in doing what you are supposed to be doing or to understand as well what you what you need to understand so i think for me personally uh, the first few weeks were a bit uh um, strange uh, because of the situation I was in um, and being the first uh, geophysicist I think and uh, and initially um, most of my colleagues were from specific country uh, you know they they didn't necessarily speak English all the time uh, so sometimes you know it's it's like maybe as if time has flipped when the majority were non omanis in the past and now the majority are omanis they speak arabic sometimes in front of their non omani colleagues 
So the same feeling probably they will be feeling today the way I felt when I joined the company when people did not speak English in front of me in sometimes even in a meeting. So that was the first challenge but I did I do I do remember mentioning it to to my colleagues like maybe we need to speak English in a meeting. Um but that was uh, maybe uh, the first thing things improved things changed with time alhamdulillah the second challenge maybe i would say um following the well operations uh, as a female sometime wasn't uh, with the female with expecting mother basically uh, it depends yeah. on which stage you are yeah these things um they could be they could form a challenge but uh, how i managed or how i overcome those challenges you have good um manager who is understanding who is and uh, you know uh, considerate and of course they know what does it mean to be an expecting mother um so definitely during those time depending on the person's condition because not all expecting mothers um go through the same situation you know some yeah. some mothers until they deliver they don't feel anything they can you know they do their rituals daily rituals normally so that was a second challenge um so alhamdulillah as i said earlier all my managers were considerate were supportive and uh, alhamdulillah um all those things were managed um in yeah. in a favor so really planning one of the things that's really yeah. helping overcoming the challenge and also seeking for the right support at the right time yeah so that's what yes. you really use as tools to overcome those challenges yeah yes i think that they you help you they help and they still help Yes. you let people around you know yeah what you want and how you feel and you know the situation that you are in and this applies not only for ladies but this is for both it's a male or female um for example i remember one of uh, you know one of our colleagues who had uh, a child who was disabled and that disabled child needed a lot of support at home um so people like those we shouldn't allow them to suffer by themselves you know they yeah definitely you know that the bosses will understand will be considerate and and that's why and that's when the company introduced working from home it, it working from home didn't start from today working from home started from those times when people and both male and female needed to look after somebody at home or they have specific situation that they needed to be away from office more than be, being in the office yeah. so i was allowed to work from home since uh, mid 90s alhamdulillah so that that was another solution that that's uh, really was really great for. yes Yeah this was a really really great thing indeed that was a really great thing from uh, from petroleum development amount to to make this option available for for their employees and i really really hope from this platform that the other company the other oil companies and all the other country sectors will consider now uh, this option since it is available and it is really working and in the corona period it's 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 proved itself yeah it's working we're still uh, working from home and delivering all the all the, our uh, tasks and tasks and uh, and the job is is going on so um, yeah yeah that's that's very important that's a very important for every uh, employee especially for every mothers uh, in in full time jobs I thank you Ustad Ahmed mm -hmm. for bringing the, that up and uh, and that's take us to the to the other side of uh, of you Ustad Ahmed and before I I elaborate on the topic that it's itching me and I would like to to say it immediately before that the, the reader of your 
of your career path uh, will be like what happening what's what wh where did you decide to change from a co hardcore profession to people support to to business uh, planning and then even uh, diversity and inclusion uh, officer so what happened there okay let me first of all um, clarify a concept or um, a stereotype probably uh, that uh, many of shall I say geoscientists or explorationists I don't know have regarding somebody who is a geoscientist and then shifting to something that is deemed um, you know like that has to do with people and deemed to be maybe less I don't say I don't know if I say less important or less crucial I don't know I don't know how how we used to look at it how I used to look at it as well um, so what I'm trying to say is that working in with people issues or in people directorate or anything that has to do with planning is not less important that what I have discovered is not less crucial than working as uh, you know in seismic processing or seismic interpretation or drilling a well it's not less important and uh, i would really encourage everybody and maybe the company should do this uh, i think it does actually already i remember Ghalib and the rest Khalid now uh, before i left Khalid Salmi was in uh, people and uh, change directorate um you know that cross uh, cross fertilization uh, between um, core businesses and uh, the supportive businesses like uh, safety, like uh, human resources. I think that is very important for people to move around and get that exposure so they, they can appreciate, you know, what is going on outside their, uh, I wouldn't say comfort zone, but outside their box, let me call it. Um, because when I was in exploration, and I worked in exploration for some 25 years probably, uh, without going out of it, I never thought that there is anything better outside exploration, or there's anything important outside exploration. That's how I felt. And, and I remember with my colleagues sometimes we talk and say, what do these people outside exploration do? I mean, apart from drilling, maybe the people who we were dealing with uh, heavily, but other than those, and our uh, petroleum engineers, of course, but other than those, we wondered what what are they doing? What are they getting their salaries for? Astaghfirullah, of course. But that's the stereotyping that I'm saying, I'm talking <laughs> about. <laughs> yeah, that's the stereotype yeah. that uh, people carry. But And that's when... I think the company need to take an effort to make people realize the importance of all sectors of the company. Now, coming to your question uh, about my shift, uh, it had two reasons. Uh, the first reason was the RSI, which is the repetitive strain injury that I had on my hand that I used for clicking the mouse when I did interpretation. So that injury was very uncomfortable uh, sometimes, or even painful, and uh, that what caused me to ask uh, my leadership to shift me to another or a, a job that has less mouse clicking, because the injury even caused, you know, pain or uncomfort even when I typed, let's say, typing a report or something. So that's when I said, okay, why do I need to do this uh, to press my hand even more? And that's when I decided uh, to seek uh, management help for me to be moved to another position that has less clicks. And alhamdulillah, there was uh, an opportunity for me to move to the planning, business planning. But that business planning was not in HR. It was inside the exploration. So it is business planning for exploration. Uh, that was a position that allowed me uh, to be exposed to the entire um, exploration life cycle um, through the reports that I was writing uh, monthly or uh, biannually or annually. 
uh, for our key stakeholders. So uh, seeing those reports, because I had to collect data from everywhere, uh, you know, from the contributors, and uh, putting them together, and issued a report that allowed me to to see what's going on within the uh, within the department very very clearly. Yeah, and so that was the one part of the business planning. But also, uh, you see the well sequences, you see the seismic uh, acquisition sequences, you see uh, um, the staff. Uh, recruitment cycle or demand mm -hmm. supply. The you st see the scholars, movement. the staff movement. You see the scholars uh, planning how many we have, how many we are planning to take, how many uh, are going to graduate, how many are returning, uh, where would they be sitting, where would they be positioned. So all of these things are part of the business planning for that department. So I was still using. Uh, the geoscientific uh, terminologies because I had to our scholars, whether they are BSc, MSc or PhD scholars, I had to review uh, their abstracts um, for their, let's say, for their master's degree or for their PhD uh, or find someone who will review them. Uh, depending on specialization. Mm -hmm. So it was still something that uh, I enjoyed doing. I'm sorry. It's my phone. It reminds me of something. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah. So it was, it was, it was still something that I had to deal with, uh, geosciences, uh, community. That's, uh, I, I wasn't very far away from where I was working. Basically, I was dealing with the same people, alhamdulillah. It's only, um, so that was the first factor. The second trigger for my move uh, or my shift was, it appeared to me or it seems like people can, you know, those peop people who meet me for the first time, they always would ask me, are you a teacher? After this, you know, after we talk for a few minutes, and I said, no, I'm not a teacher. I said, why? I said, well, you sound like a teacher. I said, I don't know, but uh, my mother was a teacher. Does that make any difference or is that a clue? And that, that happens frequently. I mean, every time I meet someone who, you know, for the first time. So it seems like I have that natural ability to, tr to transfer knowledge somehow. Um, and that you know, made me think like maybe I should develop this skill professionally further. And, and that's when I ask uh, my leadership also to give me an opportunity um, within the company for me to practice, to develop and build my um, <clears throat> knowledge transfer skills uh, even more. And Alhamdulillah, you know, and I, I'm saying this to all uh, our young professionals in PDO or whoever is listening uh, outside PDO, um, it really depends how you talk, who you talk to, in order for you to achieve what you want in terms of your career. Um, in PDO, if you know who you talk to and how you talk, uh, you will get where you want and how you want it. Um, so for me, I, on my staff report every time, every year, I would add that line. I would like to be given an opportunity uh, to develop my uh, people skills or training or development, uh, uh, people development skills further. And alhamdulillah, um, the first opportunity that existed uh, when the company was searching for somebody or people to be trained as qualified facilitators and trainers for leadership uh course uh shell leadership course that covered the entire shell um i was selected for that alhamdulillah and i was trained uh, as an alhamdulillah and that developed further uh, to becoming the uh course director for you know like uh, the first course that all technical graduates will take which is the introduction to ep business and that's how how it happened EP00 
AP00, and then it turned yeah. to be a UB00. UB00, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Indeed. And I'm actually glad that uh, the audience will understand why I am keep calling you Ustada Hannat. You just elaborated on that. It's, it just naturally comes uh, to whoever listens to you and call you Ustada. <laughs> That's fine. That's uh, fine by me. Thank you so much. <laughs> Great. Great. And uh, so, uh, so tell us about um, what would be your advice for the uh, young professionals, especially young professionals who are aiming toward leading leading position, what will be your advice? What's what they do they need to acquire uh, to reach there? Okay. Um, first of all, I would say that they need to uh, make sure that they have a good role model someone they look up to, someone they can copy and imitate, someone they can learn from, that someone they can go to when they have a question. They wouldn't feel that they are stupid if they ask that question. And they will feel, you know, comfortable to ask even non-technical question because leadership it's not technical only. Leadership actually is about leading people, not leading machines. And therefore, they should be comfortable to talk about their leadership skills or the gaps in their leadership skills. And they need to make sure that they know, they learn how to fill in these gaps. Um, so the first thing is find a good all model. Secondly, read. And I think my previous, uh, you know, the speakers, uh, pre previous uh, colleagues who are here as well, they emphasize on the importance of reading. And I'll say the same. Read. Educate yourself. Read outside what you have in your office. Read the journals. Uh, join the societies that are there, the professional societies, I mean. Um, so reading and reading. Uh, the third thing I would say, be curious. Curious meaning um, ask questions. Uh, try to understand something that not necessarily within your project. Uh, try to understand, you know, normally our projects are not singular. Our linked with other, yeah. we have we stakeholders in, in teams. Yes, and it, it's a cycle. It's a series of steps. You know, like if you're talking about uh, drilling a well or proposing to drill a well, it doesn't start with you actually. It starts with you are going back to geo geometricians. You are going back to where they do the surveys before even shooting the seismic. They are the ones who will go there. Make sure that the area is suitable, it's clean, it's suitable for, you know, it's safe and suitable for the seismic uh, trucks to move in and team to move in and shoot the seismic. So it's good if you would go and understand uh, or see and know those people who are working uh, in that particular area. So that's uh, basically is what I would say. Role model, read, and make sure that you understand the cycle. You understand the steps. Don't only restrict yourself to that particular area of yours. Um, have a, a bird's eye, as they call it, a helicopter eye um, of you know the, the entire process. Yeah, those sounds like a really golden rules uh, in any career uh, development to start the Really, uh, indeed, uh, indeed, and it's it's the they they work and and they they lead you there. And uh, thank you for sharing them, friend. Thank you. So um, uh, to our audience, we already posted a question, and it's uh, the other face of Ustad Hannat that's 
uh, we want really to show and uh, and share with you. Um, she's a very much lover of a social work and volunteering, both technical and non-technical. And uh, beside of that, she's also a mother, as we all know. So um, be, there is a secret behind it. There is a huge passion about it. And we want to know that secret as part of, of this question. And the other part of it, we want to know how can you balance all three balls in your hands, Ostada? So do I answer the question or? Uh, uh, well, oh. I'm, 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 I'm still waiting for some comments from audience. And and in, in, in course, go ahead, please. It's two big branches of the question. The passion behind it, what's the main driver, uh, drivers, and okay. the balance, of course. Okay. So the passion, two points. The first point is when I was little, I joined the Girl Guides, or oh, Al-Murshidat. That's, uh, that's when the passion started to build in. Um, and, you know, we, with... When you are in a girl guide, you, uh, you know, you go around and try to help or do things for the community. Uh, you try to, you are taught to go and do work of awareness increment uh, for the people, for health, environment, and so on and so forth. So it started when uh, at school uh, with the girl guide or Murshidat. Second, uh, probably which is even more uh, stronger, which is my mother, uh, my late mother, Allah uh, Hamha. I think she influenced uh, me and my siblings uh, to do this uh, type of things, the type of work, voluntary work, and, um, and make sure that we help and we, we contribute to the society and community. Um, because she would take, uh, she would do that, and she would take us to um, uh, with us. She would take us with her to wherever she went, and uh, you know, um, we'll be with her, seeing, helping her in what she was doing. Um, and uh, and I remember that um, she even sometimes challenged us. Um, when you know, because she was, uh, I came. We came to learn later that she was gal, uh, in a volunteer and a gal guide herself. Okay. So she so would challenge us. <laughs> it's in the blood, apparently, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so she would challenge us with the notes, you know, the 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 notes that uh, the scouts uh, and gal guides learn how to to tie them. We'll have a competition on those. And uh, so, so I think it started with that. Uh, that's when, yeah. And uh, about the balancing, uh, mm -hmm. about uh, there the balancing. is a question and, and, and comments in in background. How do I, how are you balancing uh, the the balls? How did you manage yeah. to do that? Yeah. Um, so with multi tasks. Uh, or multi, uh, what do you call it? It is tasks. Um, and this is not for women, but it's for all, um, both men and women, because they are fathers, they are brothers, they are uncles, they are all of that. Um, you cannot balance, you cannot do it all by yourself. You need um, to have the support of your family, your spouse your siblings your uh, even your boss remember when i talked about my boss allowing me to work from home um yeah. yes so you need to have the support of everyone around you that's what uh, uh what will help you to achieve what you think you need to achieve Yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely, and uh, it's and train themselves to balance few things uh, in the beginning. 
and then until they reach there with so many things in hand, uh, they don't have to fall apart because of the straining in air. Yes, absolutely. You know, because, um, and by the way, I do believe, strongly believe, uh, voluntary work must thrive, must be there in the society. Uh, society cannot survive without having uh, some people volunteering uh, for, you know, whatever, whatever reason, um, whether in helping the needy people, whether in uh, looking after the environment or whatever, you know, it's needed. Um, we cannot rely on authorities in everything. Authorities cannot reach everybody or cannot do everything. Um, definitely, we, uh, the citizens, the you know of this country or any society, we do need to be able to volunteer and support one another, where the government cannot do, um, for whatever reason. Um, so, for me, I think if anybody feel that they cannot volunteer um, because they have an issue or because um, they don't have time, because uh, they don't have the resources for them to volunteer. If that happens, I do believe that uh, those who cannot volunteer, then they should at least support those who can volunteer. And that is very, very important. Uh, people should not stop volunteering. Um, so, and it, it's enough that volunteering is part of our, uh, you know, you get rewarded, part of our, you know, religion, culture, whatever you want to call it, but um, you get rewarded for doing that. So, should people shouldn't stop, shouldn't back up from doing it. Yeah, alhamdulillah, yeah, I'm part of our religion, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very much inspired with your full-time uh, curriculum, or I say your full-time schedule, even if after your retirement. Would you like to share with us some of the great things that you're doing uh, uh, in the meanwhile? <laughs> um, first of all, tell me what retirement means. <laughs> What do you mean by retirement? Well, well, you describe it. For me, it's still a long way to go. <laughs> <laughs> True. Absolutely. Alhamdulillah. Um, so to me, uh, I don't see retirement meaning that somebody should stop activities or being active. Uh, that's not my understanding of retirement. My understanding of retirement, if, if that is somebody wishes to stop what they have been doing earlier and substitute that with something else. So for me, for example, I substituted what I was doing under restriction or boundary, the boundary of time, the boundary of schedule, or the boundaries of, you know, being location so i substituted that with activities of my relaxed boundaries i would call it. so i chose to go back to learning and uh, and uh, it is a serious learning i thought it was just a uh, light learning but no it's not uh, i enrolled myself in a number of courses and training some of them short, some of them long, and some of them have examinations, and some of these examinations are not light. They are heavy examinations. So, um, so alhamdulillah, and that keeps me very occupied, very busy already. Um, so that's one, and uh, yeah, you wanted to say something? Yeah, to uh, the audience, to those who doesn't know uh, Ustada Hannah, she's now proceeding with her uh, MSc's degrees. Actually, she's planning for MSc's degrees in Islamic studies, and she was enrolled already in uh, in, in the BC's program, and uh, she passed it. Woohoo! Congratulations! 
ان شاء الله ان شاء الله uh, الله يبارك فيك ثانك يو سو ماتش يا سو يا ذاتس وات ام دوينج Yes, and one and more thing. Last. One more thing. We still did not talk about it. I will. I will share my screen while you you will be talking about it. Okay. So it's this one. Uh, is any everybody can see it? So it's. Ustad Hanas recently she acquired a certificate in the social value, um, and she will be uh, elaborating more on that. Uh, can you see my screen? Mm, I I cannot see, but uh, I hope uh, other people well, can. Uh, let's see if we can it's see. Not visible it. left my side, but uh, I hope other people can. and maybe now yeah that's that's the one okay um yeah do i see it uh, flipped can you, can you see all of it now is it only from my screen flipped or it is flipped So basically, this is a certificate uh, on uh, uh, social value. Uh, it's a practitioner training that uh, I have attended, yes. and it was the first yeah. uh, training practitioner training conducted in the in the Arabian region. And Alhamdulillah, that uh, I was uh, one of you know those who have been selected to attend this course. Um, It is uh, basically about measuring and managing uh, the value of an activity or activities of an organization, and uh, making sure that we present the results in the best way uh, to aid and help in decision making. Um, it involves um, identifying or involving uh, all the stakeholders uh, in that activity. Uh, it involves ensuring that uh, um, we know what is valuable, what is important, and that is included, um, and uh, what is important to the organization, and what is important to the stakeholders. And it, it involves making sure that uh, the whole process is transparent, and also it involves making sure that uh, you know there is no over claiming of the value or the impact that uh, organizations or individuals or you know stakeholders are saying that they are yeah so it is a very beautiful process uh, because it um, ensures that the value uh, we, we measure the value uh, that uh, the activities uh, have or leave on Uh, the so society, so it's a social value of those activities that yeah. is being measured and uh, managed. So uh, I encourage everybody to uh, educate themselves in this uh, area because this is the today's language. Uh, what is your social impact? What is your social value? Or what is the social value of your organization or of your activity? Uh, that is the the language of today, uh, social and environment, and uh, you know sustainability. They, these are today's uh, terminologies, and everybody must know them. Very interesting, very interesting. Thank you very much, Ustad Hanet, for sharing all the experiences, the knowledge, the great things that you are doing. Thank you very much for being with us and giving us giving us some of your time. Shukran jazeera, jazakallah khair. We really spend uh, 40 minutes of uh, of great valued time, and uh, I think all of us, uh, an audience, also agree with me that there is um, definitely gold. Uh, words uh, that we will take further from this um, interview. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Um, you are welcome. It's my pleasure.
شكرا جزيلا ماي كليغ عائشه الحجري ذا فايس بريزيدنت اوف جي اس او وود لايك تو ثينك اول اوف يو اند اند وود لايك تو ريكوغنايز فاردر هو ايفر بارتيسيبيتد ان ذيس سيريز اند هيلب ذيم تو كم دريم تو كم ترو ويلكم عائشه السلام عليكم ايفريبادي هاو ار يو وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله الحمد لله Alhamdulillah. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to take a lot of time from uh, the, the audience questions. I just wanted to thank, to thank all of those who actually made this series a successful series uh, since we are coming to, the, to an, an end. Uh, of it, um, uh, all the the people we 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 hosted. Uh, thank you very much for you sharing your experiences with us, um, and I, I would like to give a special thanks for the people behind the scenes who uh, were working very hard uh, to make this uh, series. Um, uh, comes live. Uh, the organizers uh, here, uh, Abdul Manam, uh, Bushra, uh, Abdul Rahman, uh, Sabra, Naima, uh, and then a special thank for uh, for GSO presidents for uh, also given, giving us some support. Um, also, I would like to thank the hosts who um, also um, host, uh, hosted our uh, special guests, including Sabra, uh, Maram, uh, Leila, Aisha Belushi, and uh, yourself, Naima. So thank you very much. Uh, GSO, inshallah, will continue uh, bringing more activities and events that uh, focus on the female uh, and linking them to uh, the, their brothers, uh, males, and also... Um, We'll see you, inshallah, in 2021 uh, with more events and activities. Thank you, everybody. Shukran jazeelan. Um, uh, and now the floor is open for any question from the audience. By the way, Aisha, can I also thank everybody for the good job that you are doing at GSO? And uh, not only for this, uh, the female uh, chapter, but uh, uh, throughout, you know, I think uh, you are doing wonderful. Um, the topic that you're choosing for the talks is, you know, uh, very, very good and important, of course. Um, so thank you too, everybody. I'd like to thank you too for that. Thank you very much, Ms. Hanat. And I guess uh, with the with the COVID coming in, um, we had lots of uh, volunteers actually this year working behind the scenes uh, on the screens uh, from uh, Oman and uh, local areas and even uh, worldwide. So uh, it's not really that bad. It's uh, really good uh, that we could uh, connect with people from uh, across and around the world. Mashallah, great. Alhamdulillah. So, so we have here a question from our president, uh, Elias al Kharousi, and his question about how are you describing uh, the female engagement and stepping up for, from the past uh, 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 versus the present uh, and in terms of the leadership. So uh, the question is actually, um, after long career in petroleum industry, how do you describe female engagement uh, and stepping up for leadership uh yeah for from the past to present taking leadership positions how do you describe that how do you see it how did it change and evolve in, during uh, through time okay assalamu alaikum ilias uh thank you for your question um and ilias and i work together so he knows what he is asking uh exactly um Definitely, he can see the difference between uh, past and today. Um, and when I say this, I don't mean to say that women in the past did not have the opportunity to grow. It could be that women themselves did not take the opportunity to grow. Um, but today, um, they decided that no, we can, and it should be fine uh, that we grow, I think. Um, and, and also having said that, it doesn't mean that we don't have some uh, that male colleagues who don't see uh, 
the suitability of women to be leaders or to take leadership positions. There are uh, colleagues who don't see that. But for me, when we talk about leadership, I don't see leadership is, you know, you can, can be segregated as a male leadership and a female leadership. Leadership is one of those characteristics that are uh, shared or one of those, uh, I don't know, aspects that, can, that, that, that are shared between both male and female. You want to have a good leader, a leader who pulls people together. You want to have a leader who, who is fair, uh, who is honest, who is integral, who, is, who understands people and they, uh, understands their strength, they understand their gaps, and they know how to support each person accordingly. And that has nothing to do with gender. You have male who um, maybe they claim to be leaders, but actually they are destructors rather than leaders. And you have female who claim to be leaders, but actually they are destructors rather than, rather than leaders. Uh, so leadership has no gender. That's how I see it. Leadership is how good you are to bring people along with you to the good cause. Uh, and um, to make them, to make sure that they learn, they grow, they see what is right, what is wrong, they know what is uh, lack in their personality, and they know how to fill those gaps. That is a leader. You take the you take the gender out of that. That's how I see it. Thank you very much, Ustad uh, Hannat. With that, we'd like to end our session and uh, would like to thank you again for being with us. Shukran jazeel wa jakallah khair wa good night, everyone. Thank you. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you again for hosting me. Um, inshallah, have a, a happy new year, uh, 2021, and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening and the rest of the year. Shukran. You too. You too. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Ma'asalamu. Assalamu alaikum. Okay,